In this video, we're gonna create a lab that mimics anti-scan me so you can scan your malware with antivirus of your choosing. We're going to do it with a tool called AVRED. AVRED stands for antivirus reduction and it's a nice tool which allows you to scan a file for antivirus of your choosing. And the cool part is that it's going to give you all the matches, all the bytes that were flagged during the scan, so you know where to obfuscate it. Now, compared to TradeCheck, that's why it is better at least what I believe. Now, we have a lot of documentation there, the supported files, but I think it's gonna be a cool thing to just install that and showcase how it works. To install the Avid environment, we're gonna need two set of tools. First, we have the Avid server, which needs to be installed on Windows 10 client with an antivirus of your choosing. Now, keep in mind that to turn your sample submissions to off, so you don't get malwares to be flagged. Now with that, let me hop into my Windows 10 client and let's actually go to Chrome. Then let's go to the Avid server right there. All the links are gonna be in the description of that video. Then I'm going to open up a PowerShell window real quick, go to desktop and do git clone and paste that. Now if we follow the documentations for the installation of that Avid server, we just need to have a Python, of course, the pip, of course, and we need to install the requirements.txt. Now, this is important, as I mentioned, to disable your submission because you don't want your malware to get flagged globally. Now, I've done that to my Windows Defender, I'm gonna stick to it. But of course, if you want, you can you can engage with any kind of different antivirus, for instance, Asset or Kaspersky or any other. So my sample submission is being too off. Now with that, we need to just start the server and browse to here just to verify that it works. Now here, if you have some kind of DLL import errors, the solution is that you need to install uh, the C++ version and dependency and so on. And here are some instructions to run that as a service. So you don't have to start it manually. But for that case, we don't really need that. So I'm just gonna minimize that, go to the AVRED server, just zoom out, zoom in the terminal. And here, as I said, do pip install minus r requirements.txt. I've already done that, so no new things for me. And here we have a file called config.json. If we cut that config.json file, this is on what IP we're gonna bind the interface, on what port, and what engine we're gonna use. Now, for instance, this is just simple string. You can call that uh, whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as it is right now. And with that, I can do Python and then avred server.py. With that, we can see the server is actually being started. I can actually go and navigate to my local host and see that message which says MZ is up. All right, with that, let's hop into my Kavi machine where we can actually generate malware and paste the scan. So uh, on that, I'm going to actually download the AVRED. So I'm going to AVRED to go to the GitHub repository right there. I'm just gonna copy that. I'm going to do git clone and paste that here. Now with that, it should be fast enough. If I do cd avid, this is where all my files I need are. Now, if you go to documentations, it is stated that we would also need, of course, to install the requirements and then we would need to install Radar2, which is a reverse engineering framework for uh, Unix geeks. Now let's do that real quick. Let me open that new link there. With that, let me just git clone that into, into a new uh, terminal there. Now that's being done, I can paste the second command, which is going to go there and actually install that radar to framework or tool and so on. Okay, now that was installed and let's now pay more attention to the upper terminal where I have my Avid downloaded. Now here I have a lot of files, but the main one is that avred.py. This is where we're gonna engage from the tool. And then we have Avred web, which is gonna host a web interface. But before that, it's worth taking a look into the configuration.yaml file. So let's cat config.yaml. And this is where our stuff is defined. So we're gonna need to vim that. So uh, config.yaml there. And now let's let's actually swap and configure the IP and the port to be to my Windows boom machine. So I have to do uh, a new terminal there. I can do IP config and that's 64.134. So let me go back there. 34, 64, 134. 
just like that now i do not need to specify a password if you want in your app only you to access the that interface you, you have to obviously specify a password there and then you can also define the name of the engine here in that case i'm gonna call that defender because i'm using the defender antivirus now with that i can just write and quit to the file and now i can do of course python 3 um uh, or actually pip3 um install dash r requirements.txt of course no new stuff for me because i've already did that and now finally i can do python 3 avvet.py now here you can have some kind of error that's why i do minus h for help here we have a lot of things to do now first we can scan a single file we can scan all the files in app uploads and so on now we can define the speed of the scan for instance one two or three we can check the config rescan re verify and so on now in my opinion scanning things from there is kind of a waste of time because if you get like uh, 50 matches and 50 signatures you're gonna get all of them displayed here and it's somehow harder to navigate them from the web but we're gonna show both of the cases now to scan a file let me first generate one i'm going to go to app upload there and i'm gonna generate a simple msf venom reverse shell now here uh, windows x64 shell reverse tcp using stage as one defining the host and the port then format i want to be the exe and the output file test.txe but let's call something like tz2 or just tz.txe all right with that i'm going to go back and now here do python 3 avred.py minus save app upload and then do tz.exe and that should connect to the anti to the interface of my windows boom machine and actually initiate a scan so in that case we have an error saying that could not find server with name mz in config.json file that's because as before i renamed config.yaml file to have the default one to be defender now if you want to specify that one it's simple as just doing minus h again and then just specifying the s to be the defender and that's what the server is actually doing specifying the exact server in the config.json file now the default is as i said stated to amzi but if we remove that or change it to be somewhere else we need to explicitly state that or change the default values now if we do that we can see it's going to initiate a scan it's gonna scan depending on on different chunks and that depends on how things are getting flagged so it scans bigger and bigger chunks until something gets scans and then it lowers the chunk size that's why it want to say exactly what chunks are actually detected and that usually takes time so uh i'll be right back it took a while but finally we are here now this is all the output we have generated so we have a lot of matches and a lot of signatures so all these are detected 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 like we have a lot of signatures there now if you go to do ls uh, actually we need to go to app port and now to ls here and we have two files one is being the walk from the two and then the outcome so let's analyze both of them let's cat yes exe.walk and that's pretty much what was the output from the two before so which bytes were getting scans which will get signatured and so on so let's try to get the next one to be the outcome that's why i was saying that by using the terminal in the CLI version of the tool, it's kind of more complicated to track your progress and what were scanned and not. So that's why let's use the web interface. Now let's go back and do python3 web.py and that is going to automatically start a separate flask, I believe, process and then it's gonna host that on the on both of the interfaces. So let's navigate to the localhost one and there we are. Let me now zoom in a little bit like that and there we are we have our own local anti scan me running now we have options to analyze your own files some examples and so on but the menus are super nice we have upload where we can upload a file and that's where we have to specify our servers defined in the config file now on the files this is are the files which we already scanned now since i since i uploaded tz.exe this is why it is here like only the date the type and of course the signatures now if we click on the file we have all the match they are available we have we can see the section which were getting scanned and of course the 
conclusion based on the Windows Defender. Now keep in mind that you can install all antivirus you want, chain that to AVVET and then you're gonna have a different signature names. Now we can do one more scan so let me go back to actually this is all the matches there so we can analyze the bytes who are actually getting flagged like these bytes this byte, this byte, and it's kind of more structured than the CLI version. We can also view the walk from the tool again. This is the same walk from the CLI, which I believe is a super nice framework to have. Of course, now let's try to scan one more file. Let's do MSF Venom and let's call that t.exe, not tz. Now let's go to upload, let's go to browse, let's go to desktop and t.exe. Let's upload that and you can also upload the PT pdp files if you want to have more detailed uh, results but i believe these are actually pretty decent now as i mentioned before imagine that these are only 460 bytes and this scan is slow because as i mentioned it scan on a various chunks depending on what is getting tracked and what is getting not it so it can get the best result it can now the work the inner workings of that are kind of interesting to me because if you pay close attention to that we upload a single file and then the python script divides that file to various chunks and it upholds them depending on what is getting flagged and what is getting not and based on these chunks it's giving you results a these bytes were flagged and this one were not so i have to admire that this tool is designed pretty nice you can change that as I mentioned to any AV of your choosing and now let's wait for that to finish and let's analyze it one more time. While that is running I have to thank you so much guys with all my heart and especially I want to thank to our first Patreon to the channel. Appreciate you brother you have no idea how much that means to me. If you have further appreciation to the channel also feel free to become my Patreon where you can get access to my custom packer as well as to custom notes that I prepared during my years. I hope that is super helpful to you guys, appreciate you one more time and let's get moving. Okay, so here we can see the very same signatures, you know, we generated the very same file, but what I wanted to say is that this thing takes time. It takes time to split the files into various bytes, scan all of them, explain where is the signature and where is not, and this is normal to be time consuming. Now keep in mind that all this stuff are only for signature based detection. We are not touching heuristics there, we are not touching behavior based there, we are not touching any of that stuff there. We are touching the raw signature based detection, which of course should be implemented while doing malware development. And by the way, if you are wondering how the heck we are able to transfer files and how we can actually force something to get scanned, that's because we have an AMS interface for HTTP. That's right we can access AMZ over HTTP so we can transfer files and then the AVVET server is going to initiate the AMZ using the Windows APIs that can invoke the scanning procedures. Of course, if you want and want to have more knowledge about how that works, you can also review the files or just hit me up in the, in the comments. We can review it together. I really hope you find that video useful. I really hope you find my channel useful. If that's the case, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and I'll see you right in the next one.